Hello, good afternoon. I have a confession to make. I'm not a Feng Shui practitioner. In fact, I know very little about Feng Shui. But I am an energy healer for the past 20 years, probably more like my lifetime. And the work I do very significantly overlaps the Feng Shui work. And I've been learning wonderful things today. And the, the amount of overlap I have is far greater than I expected. So, energy and ancestral healer. Uh, very, very quick summary about me. And that is, grew up in Ireland, you'll find out more in a moment, and I ended up as an electronics engineer. I wasn't going to be the, go down the traditional route. And it finally took, after a fascinating 20 odd years, until about 20 years old, something fascinating happened, and then it took me on to the midlife transition, some call it crisis, <laughs> which took me onto my current path. And Dowser, and now I work primarily with business vitality, property vitality, and of course, people, because behind them all is people, but, but I, work with, I work with nature. And property sales acceleration sounds like a yeah, real estate, but for those that are stuck on the market, there is a reason for it. And it's either in here, in here, or in the property, or both. So, my presentation will be like this. As it says, introduction, the big picture, the case histories, should have time for some Q&A, and next steps. Now, what have chickens got to do with this? Well, everything. Because when I was about five years old, I discovered dowsing with my mother and father. And it was to select some young chicks to bring back on the farm and lay eggs. And it was fascinating because there was my mum's wedding ring on a thread, checking for whether there were going to be cocks or hens. It wasn't quite right because some months later some of them were crowing. But anyway, that was my introduction to dowsing. I also uh, sometimes when animals got a particular illness, which could be very quickly fatal, uh, the, vet, the vet was a long way away and expensive and transport was slow. And uh, George would come along from down the road and he would dig up the hoof print of the relevant animal, turn it over, say a silent prayer, and usually they got well. So that was my introduction. Now, when I was 22, I'd just come, moved to Cambridge and working here, and I was on holiday shortly afterwards with a girlfriend. You know, first foreign holiday, girlfriend just moved to a foreign country. You know, nervous times. And I woke up in the middle of the night with images of flames and the sound of my father shouting in distress, which was quite rare. So much so that I phoned back to Ireland, and my parents' home had been burned to the ground that night. They were fine, my brother was fine. But that set me out on a very distinct search for learning, for more. And that significantly shaped my life. I had fascinating times until around the millennium, when things started to go a bit wonky. And a bit wonky is a nice technical term. Okay? And I ended up going to a Mind Body Soul exhibition, met this Korean lady who ran her hand down my back about this far away, and I went, what was that? And that was Chi I met for the first time. And then crazy stuff started happening. That's the longer talk. And <laughs> I ended up working with them where everything is about appeasing your ancestors and working with your ancestors. And I worked with them a lot of uh, you know, manipulation, much like Ryan was, was talking about in terms of you know, working around to Dantian and so on. Got to the end of that, it was a big empty space. I went to an introductory weekend on energy healing by the Saturday night, I knew I had to do a three-year course. The next thing is, I have a practice homework, somebody with 10 years of vision and uh, balance problems, and 40 minutes later, it's gone. I have to deal with that, because who am I? That was really deep stuff. And that went on, that was th three, three years. So that was um, a time of interesting change. <laughs> so. People, so what I work with is people, places, and situations in every way you can imagine. And 
you know, as I said, property sales, health issues obviously down to root causes. My YouTube channel, which you, I'll show you a link later on, you'll find some testimonials on there which are rather, I feel, extraordinary. 30 year issues gone in short times. Family and business dynamics. And occasionally, I have a chat with a horse, just like I have a chat with a tree. And to me, there is no difference. They are uniform. Whether I'm working with a place, person, tree, business, property, they're all the same. I don't understand uh, necessarily about applying chakras to cities and towns, but I know where things are out of balance. If that makes sense to you, yes? And uh, I'll put the final details on, on the end as well. So, energy to me is, well, as you know, as, as you are all Feng Shui practitioners or very interested, it's all about consciousness and intention. Well, that's my perception on it. And it's about the intention of people, but also, especially, there can be uh, memories and trauma trapped in the past which can be either trapped within us, or in our ancestral line, in our home, in the landscape, in the country. And that can be, that can be there in so many ways. And our individual actions, now by the way, I'm stating this from my 20 plus years of experience, not, not theory. Our individual actions and the actions of groups uh, all interact and interact consciously with the earth, which is also a very conscious being. Now, those ripples spread out, but then so do other ones. Horrible things happen. We do that in the, in, the, in the name of progress in so many ways, but those effects can create imbalances that can have major effects on our lives. Now, this is a reference book, uh, which is available on Amazon, it's about £11, and they published 1980, I think which is a German doctor who looked at an in, in enormous number of cases and what they found was, and it's correlated to however many countries, is working with other doctors as well. Wherever there are non-beneficial energy lines crossing on people's beds in particular, then that's a lot, a lot of tests. So take a bed, you get two non-beneficial energy lines crossing. That very often correlates, or very usually correlates, to an illness or an imbalance in that part of the body. Now, in that case, we have a person there on the left-hand side of the bed, may have something around the heart or chest area. The other person then may have something in the head, so mental, physical, whatever, and likewise, lower body. So, th this is all about the tangible, the measurable, the scientifically proven, where they've got, uh, got enough data built up to say this is what really happens. But what they do overlook is, of course, the, shall we say, the spiritual or the woo-woo, whichever you want to call it. And that is not taken into account. And that's the bit that's crucially important, I feel. I don't disagree with anything that's said in the book, um, but combining them together brings a much greater viewpoint. Now, dowsing, which is the art of finding answers that we don't logically know, finding answers to questions when we don't logically know the way to do it, is that it can often be interpreted as a sort of judgmental way. So it's positive, it's negative. I like to look on it more as harmony. But, as an engineer, I like to measure things, rather than work on it just feels okay. I do both, but I like to engine and to measure, and that's that, that's my style you know, in, in days of old. But that's more the way I like to look at it: balance and harmony, and bringing that balance and harmony into play. I feel that is crucially important, and I don't practically look at it that way, but I feel that that is what actually happens in all the situations I deal with. And that's the process I use. Now, you may say, well, what about this clearing process down here, Jim? Well, for any of you who do any healing, balancing, feng shui, whatever it is, process of correcting imbalances, that is the process. 
It doesn't matter what that process is. But I feel it's vitally important that you're able to test it and repeat and go around to the, to the next step to do it. And so if I'm working with somebody with a relationship issue, with a money issue, with some accounts of the property or whatever it is, it's identify the, the trigger point back in time where that, where that comes from and then uh, what the, measure what the effect appears to be. I scale everything between minus 10 and plus 10, keep it simple. Lots of people, even clever ones, get confused above 11. They can't relate to it. <laughs> Does that make sense? And work on it that way. But life can get messy. So there can be hundreds of different aspects. And what I do is break it down into what's the key issue. It's rarely the big problem they bring to the table. It's usually something else, something long ago. And it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's a health issue, whether it's a business issue, or something to do with the home or the crops don't grow. And I work on, on the basis of, if you've got something, where, if you've got, say, a minus six out of minus ten, that's a pretty unhealthy place to be. However, in whatever terminology you like to measure it. And then as, as you clear it, then it tends to go upwards towards the opposite polarity. So if we've got, say, a minus three, when it's fully cleared, it tends to go towards plus three. If it's a minus five, it tends to go to plus five. I, I have come across places where other people have worked in the past and it feels like a, an operating theatre, it feels kind of neutral, there's no, no life in it. Uh, I don't try and put anything in there, but just basically bring it up. I hastily put this together last night, but you get the principle. It's all about the vitality of everything. The vitality is the energy flow, the consciousness, the intention, the positivity, the, the balance. and. So literally, if you've got somebody, they're born happily, okay, not too much trauma, will say their vitality is a 10. And then they get, you know, they get an illness, they get bullied at school, they, something happened, you know, something really good happens, might even go above 10, and then divorce, redundancy, illness, shock, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, but the, ch the thing is that vitality can drop down and be cumulative over a long period of time. And from months to years, I won't say lifetimes, I just work with one life. Okay? So, and this is, what I see is this is reflected in people's health. And so a lot of people who, you know, why do apparently totally healthy people get really ill and catch various things going around when others who look kind of down and out go chasing through, because underneath their exterior experience, their vitality, if you measure, what is their vitality? You know, do you measure by dowsing or leaning or you know, kinesiology? It doesn't matter. What is their vitality? The chances are, if it's quite low, they are susceptible, more susceptible to imbalanced energy, that they are uh, susceptible to possibly to illness and also EMFs as well. Uh, because they can be quite ungrounded. But that can be a separate issue. That time scale is throughout life, irrespective of age and pre-birth pre going back to where. I worked with somebody fairly recently, a teenager with extreme uh, social anxiety. I worked with them and their parent. And they say, oh, this happened and this happened and this happened. And okay, I'm feeling a bit puzzled and I'm doing my fingers and thumbs, kinesiology. And said, well, what happened? something like two months before birth. I was rushed into hospital, I was very ill, etc., etc., etc. A lot of things happened, and that was what it was. So then I worked remotely with the energy, bringing the energy into balance, removing that trauma, and I'm told that this teenager has given up, given up their medication and gone charging around very differently, very positively. Now, a real life case, going back to beds. Somebody asked me, they'd been told, they were having sleeping difficulties, they'd been told there was an energy line going through the bed. So, very simplified model on there. So that, that being the bed over there. So, I went in and, yeah, there was a line there, it wasn't very strong. But then I noticed, what's that? And I said, what's, what's going on here? Something's not right. 
and that's where my partner was when they were ill. They had a bad heart. And that was where they died. And I was picking up that energy later on. Now I cleared that and there was some success but there was also some other issues going on in the background as well. So these energies are there, they hang around, they can be very, very uh, affected, they can affect us a lot, but they, and we're, we're not aware of what's going on. Now, a good place. This is a restaurant, cafe, we, uh, my wife and I go to occasionally, and it's like being down in the womb of the earth. It's beautiful, it's just below street level, and it's about 750 years old. Might be more, somewhere around there. But, on there, some steps, okay, where you come down into the place. And one day we were there, and we now just, just minding our own business, somebody stumbled, and somebody else stumbled. And then the third person stumbled and went, okay, what's going on here? And what we sensed was that there was an energy blob, or a little being or something, being a rascal, literally sitting along underneath the bottom step. Had a little word with them, and there were no more stumbles. <laughs> it's what we do, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> and, but it's all about the trauma. What is the trauma? What is the negativity? And I don't mean trauma in terrible things that have happened. It, be, it can be an accumulation of ancestral things. I've worked in some cases going back 50 generations. That's a, or more in, in one case. It's about 1,500 years. And... In my own case, I seem to have taken on board a burden of, and substantially cleared to date, he says, crossing all his fingers, um, a lot of Ireland's ancestral trauma, going way, way back, all kinds of things showing up. And not all the fun. Oh, sorry. Right, okay. A classic problem, geopathic stress, straightforward. A cornfield. We had a dowsers meeting years ago, and one of the members said, I've got this problem and I can't solve it. I said, what is it? We're sitting around this beautiful big shiny table in, the, in this house, about a dozen of us. And they said, well, this is farmer's field, and this line of nothing growing has appeared across it. And it's happened a few years. And I, I can't figure it out. I don't know what's happening. And we sat down and so we asked a few questions. And we, we started looking into it. A few people went, hang on a minute. I'm getting an, an image of a quarry somewhere at one end of it. And I think about three, three of us got, got this. There was this quarry at the end. And they're looking really puzzled. But there's no quarry nearby. And then somebody else said there was a corn silo somewhere at the other end. And then this lady remembered. She used to play in the quarry as a child. It was half a mile, a couple of miles away. You have to look at the bigger picture. Because the problem, the problem that you have here, remember going back to the beds, may well be something that's coming from miles and miles and miles away. Yeah? Or even further in some cases. Um, now, the other point I would make, I would, that's slightly out of order, but it's important now, is that energy lines or ley lines, whatever you want to call them, they come in different shapes and sizes. Some are on like a more or less fixed grid, a certain distance apart, and they're fairly regular, fairly common. But then there are the bigger ones, like the Michael and Mary line, which run across the UK from Cornwall going out to Norfolk, Norfolk coast somewhere, more or less in a roughly straight line. Some years ago, we were at a dowsing event down near Bury St Edmunds, which is down, down, towards, down towards Norfolk. And there's lots of things, a fascinating weekend, it was intense. But in that field, the Michael line was going through, and you could walk through it, and you could feel it. I mean, literally, you could feel this sort of, sort of softness through your shins. It would go further, got stronger and stronger and stronger, and then weaker and weaker. And it was about 20 meters wide, possibly more. Next weekend, some friends came and were telling me about this. And they said, oh, can we go and look? And we did, and we went into the field and went, uh, there's nothing here. 
my sense was it was about 20,000 feet in the air and it was anchored at uh, Royston Cave and somewhere out in the North Sea or Denmark. And my, my impression was that it was rotating around in a big arc like a skipping rope because somebody was working on it in South America or something like that. I don't know exactly. All I know is it was there, very strong, and then it wasn't. And that's something we have to be aware of, that there are both static, apparently static and definitely moving ones. Does that all make sense? So now you see it, now you don't. <laughs> but don't ask me to define it any more than that. A real bed, well, representing a real bed, um, <laughs> uh, the other side of the world, a uh, client about four or five floors up, uh, they couldn't sleep, they had a problem going on for some time, but they woke up in the night feeling very uncomfortable, and they were living by themselves, and they tried various things and nothing happened. And it was an unusual layout of an apartment. I'd had a look at a, an adjacent apartment on, online. And I was like, okay, I can't see this. So I took this client through a guided meditation around their apartment. And said, okay, go through the camera. What's behind the wall? The bathroom. It feels good, quite really good. What's the next room? The bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's going on in there? So it wasn't making any sense. So we, I, so I took them through a guided meditation and we worked together on this. And essentially there was an energy trapped in the bed. And we worked on, in various ways, in the guided meditation, get, convincing it to go and get rid of it. I'm sure David Attenborough would have been fascinated, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a rabbit, to put it that way. But they confirmed a few weeks later, problem was gone. So that's, that's the kind of amazing things that happen. Now, a chair. Somebody I know works at, works at home, yeah. somebody in his 30s, thereabouts, and he's chatting one day and he said, Jim, I've got a pain in my <clears throat> manhood. I'm a bit worried about it and I've had scans and they didn't find anything wrong. Okay, let's have a look, see. And so I started testing, where, when does this come from? And it was something like six weeks earlier. And I'm going, what is going on here? And it's like, mm, not sure, mumble, mumble. You know, the way the thoughts come, come through as you're, as you're working with it. And eventually I said, did you have a visitor there? Whatever time period it was before. And he said, uh, oh yeah, it was an advisor from something. Mm. Did he sit in that chair? No, he sat in the other one. But it's the same as this one. Right. So what I got was that this person, unknowingly, was carrying this negative, non-positive energy, which had, shall we say, fallen off them, or got left behind in the chair. And somehow, the person I was speaking to had then managed to pick it, they'd picked it up and had duplicated it onto the other chair. We cleared it, pain gone, just like that. So, we never can be sure that our nice pretty chair or you know, sun, lounge, sun lounger can be okay. It's a good idea to check. You know, is it okay? Am I, am I clear? Have I, have I picked up any passengers along the way? And in that picture, how many things could possibly be carrying energy that might be annoying you? All of them, yes? Absolutely all of them. And the carpet. Don't forget the carpet. I've cleared houses before and have energy. Apparently they test as being okay. And I've subsequently found out that the carpet was still carrying some energy. Doesn't mean it needs vaccine or anything like that. It's simply carrying some unhelpful energy. That's my wife. Now she doesn't do the public thing, but living putting up with me for the last however many years. <laughs> Uh, she, she has acquired uh, the in various insight skills. This is a number of years ago, it was by the Thames down in Oxfordshire somewhere. And joking, they said, let's take your photo, it looks really nice, and we'll look. Yeah? Point on the camera, oh, memory card error. It was working a moment ago, that's curious. Hmm, perfectly okay. 
memory card error. Okay, what do you think is going on? So what I sensed was there was something here, so I asked her to move out towards the edge and then move the camera away, and it was okay. Now, I don't know what was going on here, but I do sense there was a nature spirit having some fun or saying, not on my patch. <laughs> a house in the States, a clapboard house, a bit like that, a bit like that, out on a long, thin road, and various problems going on that had to do with Indian burial grounds and goodness knows what else. But, I turned me into it and I go, it doesn't belong here. Oh, it was moved 40 years ago. Remember, they moved the houses in a lot of cases. <laughs> that was one of the major problems. And back, remember, remember that. How often have you found yourself out of your depth? That in, and for people on Zoom, that is a really good question. How often do you find yourself out of your depth? Because I certainly did. That is, represents something. I was coming from a work, giving a workshop in Birmingham with a friend, complicated situation, in meeting somebody at somebody else's house, I was invited along. And we were chatting away, and it was something not right, and we eventually realized we better do some dowsing, something wasn't correct. And about every two meters, the rods went spinning round, whichever way I went. And most of the other people have never done dowsing and were fascinated. They were all getting the same results, and I'm feeling worse and worse and worse. I'm told I was, I was turning blue. And what I eventually identified one place that I could sit inside the house. I, was, I couldn't escape. It was in sort of a built up area, and I was trapped in this energy bit. And the one place I could work was turned out to be where the person in the house sat to watch TV. That was the only place they felt comfortable. And what I believe is the case is that there was literally something like a hexagonal energy pattern, call it a honeycomb if you like, about two meters across, extending over a wide area, and let me know what your dowsing or your thoughts indicate, but I get the impression it's of the order of 60,000 plus years old. But I was suffering consequences from that for a long time. I walked straight into it, unprepared, not thinking, probably a bit ungrounded from giving my workshop, etc., a long day, and I just walked straight into it. Not recommended. <clears throat> we, were, we were asked to clear some energy in France. I'll keep it uh, nice, and, nice and simple. And somebody started, they got down two houses in a little village, little hilltop village, and, no, no sorry, I your pardon. That's the wrong map. They owned two houses and they started modifying the second one. And the neighbours they'd been friendly with went ballistic and absolutely went totally illogical and, and, and crazy on them. We went over there, we spent several days in the place, and what we found was that a very strange setup, but there was we found that there was a, a, a massacre site under another church a few miles away in the village, and it just you know back in the Cathars in the Cathars days. I was going to put the map on the slide, but I got very clear instructions not to do so yesterday, uh, which was rather interesting. But it went back, I dated it back to 12 something, whenever the, the Cathar massacres were. And it was subsequently ver verified by the owners in the French records, and I know Parle Francais. So. That's another one I did, it was just three days, somebody else, somebody else in, in France and that involved clearing a whole chunk of countryside. I knew the source problem was 15 kilometers away, give or, give or take, and we had to clear a whole bunch of countryside fairly dramatically, driving around, and uh, there was one little town we came down to, and what happened there was, we stopped for a coffee, cooking hot, we're sitting there, and suddenly went, oh, hang on, there's something really nasty under the chateau, up the hill, and I asked the angels to clear it, and at that precise moment, there was, a, there was a bang that shook the town. Now, I don't know if it was the French Air Force or what, but it was interesting. Good stories. <clears throat> Happy ones. Massive energy clearing on a, on a house not in, in East Anglia. 
and they were they were stuck. They had some problems, and they had lots of lots of problems. I got there. We had a chat, and a cup of coffee, and a look around. And they, I went out and looked. And they said, "What's going on up there, up the bridle way?" And they said, "Did anyone tell you about the crash bomber?" And about 100 metres from the house, a, a bomber had crashed during the war. I mean, I sort of saw the images of it. I got that cleared. Did a lot of other work with the house, and there were amazing positive changes. Really amazing changes. And this, there's a video on YouTube which was taken three years later, and I didn't know about this, but there were two very old fruit trees in the garden, an apple and a plum, and they produced hardly anything. They had considered cutting them down. For the following three years, they were producing fruit like that in vast quantities. That's at the end of the season. Now, I didn't work specifically on that, and certainly not on the fruit trees, but that was a side benefit of what actually happened. I mean, I just tell you what, what happens. You know, it, it's the unanticipated benefits of the changes, which I'm sure applies to much of the work you do as well. The unantici unanticipated bits that happen. So, property development. I've worked with multiple properties where they can't get loans. Uh, I had one in particular who uh, they'd remortgaged their own property several times, all under control, and this time round. The, the, the lender had failed them at the last moment, and the agent they used was the same one as before, and it, they went again and again, failed at the last moment. When I turned into the house, I got that the, they didn't own it, but these people know what they're doing, signed all the paperwork, thinking it's a, it, you know, it's a sold off council house. No, it was ex police houses sold off years before, and energetically, somehow, the police federation had not released those properties. Paperwork's done, but the energy's not done. And that, oh, when that was cleared, things got sorted out. There were some slight complications, but they got it sorted out very quickly. And sales acceleration, same kind of thing. Uh, 12, months to, to, 12 months to six days later, they, uh, 12 months, nothing happening on the city offers. Six days later, two offers and sold. And just recently, somebody I met uh, I was telling him about what I do, lives in Nairobi, the house on, on the market for a year, and they realised on, on the way on the plane, on the way back, that what might be wrong, hammer and chisel, somehow it was named as the combination of their names, like it was their baby. They immediately got a call from the agent, or possibly two separate calls, and then they got a call from another agent they'd forgotten all about. I didn't do any work on it. I just talked to him. And he went, he made the connection. And business vitality. Same principle, I worked with a number. So in summary, what we need to do is for ease of life, best success. I'd say is ask lots of questions and ask questions of yourself. And some of those questions are, am I up to this job? Am I capable of doing it? Is it for my highest good? These are the starting points, because it's not just about doing the work with the client. Sometimes it's important, you know, it's often very important to get the money in, to you know, get the work done, to maybe work with somebody else, who may be pressured by somebody else to work with them to do it. But feel into it, you know, as, as, as Ryan was saying, you know, go in and go in here. If it doesn't feel right, check out why. There may be something you need to deal with, there may be something you need to clear. But protection is what's important as well. Whatever your mode of protection is, whether you ask for Archangel Michael or whatever method you use, make sure it's in place. Don't get carried away. Don't walk into a situation, a sticky situation like I did with that honeycomb. 